Hi, Mary Drummond here. I am a volunteer with Look Good, Feel Better. I'm also a makeup artist. Um, I would generally be involved with the Vincent's Hospital workshops in Dublin. Um, I know my colleague here, Darcy, has explained to you about the skincare aspect of a workshop. So I'm just going to move on now and do um, the makeup for you and what we concentrate on. The difference with the Look Good Feel Better workshops is that the ladies who attend have undergone um, treatment for various forms of cancer. So as a result of that, a lot of the defining feminine features are gone and um, we just help them to get through this very temporary period in their life with some makeup tips and tricks. Um, so before they go on to the foundation, I would generally address something called erythema, which is redness that can occur as a result of treatment. Um, and what I would suggest would be something like this green primer here. And you only ever use a tiny little bit of this. You'd never need to buy two of these. And you would only ever apply it to the areas where you have the redness. This can be in the corner of the nose, on the, the chin, the cheeks, anywhere. And it can be gone the next day. So it's just handy to have it um, in your kit um, with um, foundation. Generally, the skin can be quite dry at this time for people, so a lot of people switch to a tinted moisturiser. Um, what I would say when you're buying product is try and buy something that has the least amount of um, ingredients in it and um, least fragrance, which wouldn't be irritating to the skin. Um, the main tip I would say to the ladies is to only bring their foundation up around towards the socket of the eye. Um, the area around the eye can be quite thin, it can be crepey and it can have lines and the more product that's on this area the more that these lines will show uh, up and you'll emphasize any dryness that's there. So what we do is we take a, a, a lovely wonder product almost, It's they're very, not expensive, they're concealers and brighteners and what they should be is a shade lighter than your foundation and um, a slightly lighter texture than your foundation so if it's nice and creamy all the better and I would just suggest that they would just apply it around the socket area of their eye and um, this would be where most people have discoloration and out towards the crow's feet sometimes here as well maybe around the corner of the nose on the chin area now this comes in generally three colors you generally have um, a sort of ivory color porcelain color and a peach color um, the peach would be for people who have quite dark areas around the eyes there and just take a nice soft brush and just blend that in and that will blend in seamlessly with your foundation um, and it'll brighten up the center of the face for you and it will do the work of a foundation in that area so you're also doing a little bit of concealing a little bit of brightening and you're using the products in the correct way that they should be used rather than trying to use foundation to do the job for you. So when you look at a photograph of somebody with a professional makeup on, generally you will see that the centre of the face is, is, is lighter and that has a lifting effect on the face and an anti-aging effect on the face. So a little soft brush like that just to keep in your little makeup bag for blending in a concealer. Um, we spend a lot of time on the brows in the workshop and how to draw on brows. Um, it is a big thing because it does frame the whole face and when they're gone, it can be quite traumatic. Now, if you have no brows at all, it can be very difficult to know where to start. So they would generally have one of these little tapered pencils um, in the workshop. It has a spoolie at one end. If you have some hair there, you can brush out any foundation that might be sitting in it. And then to where to start. You have a starting point of where the brow should come in and you put the pencil to the corner of your nose and straight up. That's as far as the brow should come in. If you bring it in any further, it's like a frown on the face. So um, you can put a little mark there if you want to. Um, then the highest point of the brow or the arch Again, the pen at the corner of your nose and look straight in the mirror and right straight across your eyeball up. That would be your arch point. Um, and the length of the brow then would come out the corner of the nose across the corner of the eye and that would be about as far out as your brow would grow. That's the ideal point for the, the brow to grow out to. But not everybody has that. I don't have that. So you can always add it on with your pencil. So the main thing to do is just to start, you could start up at your darkest point here, which is always the, 
the arch of the brow and then it sort of fades, the hair naturally fades in colour and when it gets to here it grows straight up so just do a few little strokes straight up but just keep little strokes just to mimic the hairs and don't lean heavily on it, just keep doing little strokes, that's the trick, no long lines or heaviness. Now it takes a little bit of practice to do this. If you're not feeling very good at it, you could also use stencils with some eyeshadow. Or you could get somebody else in your family to do it for you. There's a lots of different ways. You can even get brown mascara as well if you have a few hairs regrowing there as well. Um, the eyelashes are also something that define the eyes and define the shape of the eyes and we miss those when they're gone. It's not recommended to use false lashes because the um, skin around the eyes can get quite thin with um, the medication and you don't want to tear it so the glue is not good for it so just for the temporary period if you want to use um, a coal liner or um, with something like a, a soft pencil brush like that so what you want to do is um, take your coal liner and if it's not soft just rub it off the back of your hand to soften it up a little bit and really the trick to this is you don't want to try and draw lines or anything like that it's just imagine you're massaging the the, la the root of your lash like that and that will automatically follow the natural shape of your eye again on the upper line just imagine you're just massaging where the root of your lash is and that's all you're going to do and it'll pick up on the shape of your eye naturally because there is no other shape to follow and just help to define the eyes, bring out the shape of them. You can also take your little pencil brush and you can soften it like that. You can also take a little bit of brown shadow and go in with the pencil brush and just, again, just this image of you massaging where the root would be of your eyelash and that'll follow the natural line of your eye. We do go into the, um, the eyeshadow um, a lot on, in the workshop, but if you are just looking to emphasize again the shape, bring it out a little bit more, give yourself a little bit more different definition. Just take something like a soft gray or a soft brown. I have a soft brown here. Tap off the brush. You don't want too much product on the brush. And simple as just keep moving your brush. Keep blending. I hold the brush way down the handle so I'm not putting too much pressure. And the only place I'm not putting eyeshadow is up on the brow bone. I want to leave that clear. And just almost like a, a windscreen wiper back and forth and just blending you can't go wrong with eyeshadow if you just blend and that'll just help to define the eye a little bit more as well like that just keep moving it no matter what color you use I'm only dipping it once into the shadow and then I just keep moving it I don't bring it up onto the brow bone if you have heavy set eyes hooded eyes I should say you can just bring it up a little bit higher when you look in the mirror, when you open your eye, and just make sure you can just see it. Now, you can also bring that underneath as well. Hold the brush up. So that you don't drop stuff down onto your cheeks. And that's it. So, um, keep it simple. Um, with your mascara, the skinnier your applicator is, the better, because if you have regrowth and there's only a few little hairs there, you want your, your wand to catch all your little bits of hair. And the skinnier that is, the better. So you can see quite fat ones out and the, they show you the ones on the stands of mascara. Avoid them. Um, they can be quite messy if you've got very fine hairs. You could also get a lower a lash mascara, which has a very small little wand like that, almost like your brow mascara as well. And you can just catch little hairs with that as well. Um, with the blush and the bronzer on the face, a lot of women are afraid of blusher. Blusher is um, very good for anti-aging and lifting the face and giving warmth to the face. If you're not sure what color to use, I would go with a soft peach color. It suits most people. I have a lovely soft pink here. We'll just take a little brush and just literally, your cheekbone naturally is up here. Now the pads of our cheeks sometimes fall with age or flatten out but you want to keep them up high and that is the anti-aging way to 
apply your blush just keep moving it again always tap off your brush never have a big splodge of product on your brush and keep your handle your hand down low on the handle just to take pressure off your face and that is your blush that'll just warm up the face um your bronzer i would stay away from anything with shimmer in it keep it matte and this would be to just define the face shape wise a little bit so you want to almost start at the ear keep moving your brush no extra pressure and that'll just seamlessly blend in with your your blusher it'll meet your blusher and just as far as the flat of the face don't bring it out to the front of your face just along the side towards the ear and back again um the other area that you like to apply this is along the jawline tuck in any jowls that are there jowly face we don't like that and then where the sun would hit the the forehead naturally you can avoid that if you've got a very short forehead but it just like a figure of three like that as you're popping out in the evening you want to add a little bit more to the eye a little sort of dip in the temple here just blend from your eyeshadow out to there again it's another little contour on the face keep it very simple nice and soft um bear in mind that your features have changed a little bit so you don't want to do anything too heavy a little bit of lip gloss um, and that's all you need to have a soft day makeup on now the other things that come up in the workshop would be um, that the, after maybe a week or so of after chemotherapy you'd get some severe hot flushes um, a little handy thing to have is a handbag size of um, this uh, thermal spring water it's anti-inflammatory it's hydrating and it's very cooling on the skin so you can just spray it on your face and it'll just cool you down instantly and um, very handy to have also if you're very irritated and very um, um, sensitive with your skin if you want to spray a little bit of that onto cotton it's a, it's a lovely cleanser to use on the on the face um, the body gets very dry as well, very irritated and um, something like the spray moisturiser. If you're not feeling energetic about rubbing moisturiser into your skin, you can use this. One spray would generally cover a limb on the body um, and people love it. They trust it. It's very gentle on the skin and it goes straight in. And you could even get somebody in your family to help you um, with your legs or your feet if you're too tired, if you're in bed and you just want to have a nice cooling moisturiser on your on your, your legs or your feet. Um, thanks for listening. Um, if you have, if you know somebody who could benefit from a workshop with Look Good Feel Better, we'd be delighted to see you. We're in 16 hospitals around Ireland. Um, you can just let your oncology nurse know um, and just spread the word. And we hope to see somebody soon that you know and that we can help. Thank you.